Hi everyone, this is Melissa Lanigan, speech and language therapist. Today I'm going to talk to you about ways that you can boost your child's speech and language development at home in a natural way. These Tips and strategies can be useful for young children of toddler age, preschool age. Some of the tips might also be useful for children that are already in school. The first thing that you need to do is to take the pressure off talking at home. Often the more pressure we put on our children to talk, in fact, the less that they will want to talk to us or the less they will want to use their language. So that means avoiding things like asking them loads of what's this questions, what's this, what's this, what's this, when you're playing or talking with them, and try to avoid saying the word say. So sometimes we get into the habit of saying things like, say ball, say cat, say hello to the lady, say, now I know I probably do this, say thank you thing sometimes, um, but yeah, you just want to avoid the saying say and the overuse of what's this. So just take the pressure off talking. What you're going to do instead is model words, model sentences for your child at home. So when you are doing something with your child and you feel the urge to do, say ball, say cat, what's this? Instead, just tell them what it is. So it's a cow, it's a cat. Wow, look. And sometimes by doing that, the child might actually decide to say something when the pressure is off of talking. Another thing um, that's quite important if your child is using a soother or a pacifier is to try and remove that. So a lot of advice out there would say to try and completely remove pacifiers or soothers by the time the child is 12 months old. If you can't completely eliminate them, what I would say to you is try to limit them to when the child is going to bed or when it's nap time. OK, basically, you don't want the child to have a soother in their mouth at any point where they are interacting or talking because um, that can distort their sounds. It can distort their babble. It can lead to more limited babble in young children. Um, because obviously if you've got something in your mouth, it's going to alter the way that you're saying it. And we really don't want that in young children who are just starting out learning to talk and learning about sounds. It can also lead to teeth misalignment. Um, there's also reason to believe that it can, that there's a link there with ear infections and fluid in, in the middle ear because overuse of a pacifier um, apparently can keep the auditory canals open and that in turn then leads to um, secretions from the throat getting into the middle ear, which could be painful for your child. And we also know that ear infections can cause delay with speech and language skills okay so there's a little bit of a chain reaction there with children who are overusing pacifiers so rule of thumb try and get rid of them as soon as you can if you can't try and keep them for maybe nap times or quiet times but basically reducing them as much as possible if not eliminating them altogether another strategy that I can tell you that is quite useful would be to reduce screen time. What I mean by screen time is TVs, iPads, um, tablets, computers, phones, anything that is considered a, a screen. All right, so these are quite, I suppose, addictive even for adults and they just are not really beneficial to your child's interaction or speech and language development. What's a better thing to do really is to encourage your child to be playing with toys or reading books in the time that they would usually be having screens. If you think about, you know, things like playing and reading, those kind of things, playing on the floor, are really good for your child's motor skills. They're great for their speech and language development. They help develop their problem solving skills. They help their interaction skills. So there's so much more your child can be gaining by playing on the floor with their toys, reading books, then they will gain from looking at a screen. And often with the screens, you'll find it's quite difficult to get your child to shift their focus from the screen to you. So in terms of children with any attention span difficulties, really, really will want to be reducing that screen time quite a lot. Talk out loud as you're doing your daily routines. So if you are Cooking the, the dinner tonight, you are going to be modeling words like mommy's cutting the vegetables, mommy's stirring the soup, mommy is turning on the kettle and so on. So you're going to talk out loud like that so that your child is getting exposed to all this lovely familiar vocabulary at home 
and some children we know need many many more repetitions of words if they are to learn them than say maybe another child does so an easy way to get those extra repetitions of words in during the day is for you to talk out loud about what you're doing or what your child is doing throughout the day I also want you to think about the words that you are choosing to model for your child so sometimes there might be words that I might decide okay I'm going to repeat this words a few these words a few times today to my child so think about the kind of words that might be helpful words or powerful words. So often words that we maybe repeat a lot to our kids would be things like, well done, good boy and good girl. However, these words are not so helpful for our children to learn because they don't hold power for them. They're not going to get them what they want. So better words or more helpful words that would be useful to your child would be words like open, go, eat, drink, stop, more. So if you think if you were to wake up in the morning and you had no, um, you know, ability to communicate or not very well developed language skills, but you could say five words, probably five words that would be more useful to you to get you what you need would be words like open more because, you know, they're words you can use in many different scenarios Um you know, more can get you more food, can get you more toys, can get you more of whatever you want. So try and think about the kind of words that might be useful to model to your child in all of your routines. You can also read books to your child as a way of developing their speech and language development. So why are books important? Well, books are really visual. So you've got pictures backing up your words. They're really repetitive. So the words in the book don't tend to change. Um, sometimes we can change the words of the book if we want to, but they're nice in that it tells you the same things to say each day. So repetition will help with language learning. You're repeating that book each time in the same way when you read it and that can be really helpful for vocabulary development. Reading books is also a brilliant foundation for later reading and writing development. So think of that, you know, when your child is approaching national school age, it's really good to be reading books to them before they get to that stage. There is also studies to show that children who are read too often or and who like to read books will have better vocabulary than children maybe who are not into books or who are not read to so often. So repeating the same book to your child is completely fine because they will learn from that repetition. You can also develop your child's speech and language skills by singing nursery rhymes together. So if your child is talking, fantastic, you can sing the same nursery rhyme together and hopefully they can fill in a few of the words for you. If your child is not yet talking, you can still sing the nursery rhyme together, um, but maybe you are encouraging your child to look at you and to smile at you and giggle during the song and that could be their way of partaking in the song. And finally, a lovely way to encourage your child's speech and language development is to work on their play skills and to play with your child ideally on the floor so you can play with them with toys or without toys if you're playing with them with toys um, as i said ideally do it on the floor and what you're going to be doing is talking about what they're doing with the toys talking about what you're doing with the toys try and you know muck in a bit and join in on the play acting like a child yourself that will just be really fun for your child and they're going to be learning from you as you are modeling what to do with the toys okay i hope that information has been helpful to you and that you can implement some of that at home